Welcome to Oregon Voters Digest, the program that brings forward the social and political issues that are important to people living here in the Pacific Northwest. And now, your host, Bruce Broussard. Well, folks, I guess we're, we're in, the, in the 2014 and we're going to have another Veterans Day. And we, this show will be dedicating that, talking about that date, and the way we're going to be doing that, we're going to be do, talking about some of the services that are offered to vets, give you, you sort of give you a little background of uh, what's going on in, in the community, and also uh, with your family members, especially if, you're, if you've got vets in the family, or if you, if you are a veteran looking at the show and whatever, give you a little background in terms of why you should participate, if you will, in, 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 uh, and acknowledge Veterans Day. Um, the way we're going to do that is that I've got some my guests here today, uh, uh, folks who have, have actually participated in one way or the other. Uh, and as you can see over to my my right, but actually to your, to your left on the screen, I've got uh, Craig Murphy. You've seen him before. Craig is uh, he's uh, he's been we've, we've talked about the service dog aspect of it, and some issues that uh, he's had, if you will, as far as the service animals are concerned. And it's a very important piece of his life. And, um, and so consequently, he's here to kind of represent uh, a person who's a, who's a disabled vet in himself. A PTSD is something that's well known within the, within the, uh, within the uh, as far as veterans are concerned, across the board. And a lot of times people don't understand what PTSD is all about. And a lot of these folks are just trying to get back in society and live their lives. And uh, so it's very important we acknowledge that so you'll understand what the definition of PTSD is and how involved that is. And next to him is... Is a Bruce Hall, my name is Bruce Hall, Veterans of Foreign Wars of America, Veterans of Foreign Wars. So anyone that participated in, in, in a foreign war, one way or the other, other uh, is identified and acknowledged, if you will, as a VFW vet, if you will. And Bruce will be spend a little bit more time talking about the VFW and why it's so important to be supportive of the VFW. They're very, very involved, and uh, there, there's, a, there's a lot of work hours, if you will, involved with trying to get the support to educate the public about what the VFW is and what they do and why it's so important for American vets here within the country. And then there are many organizations that are, i.e., identified with, um, with vets and the services that, and needs and whatever, and a lot of times people don't understand that. A lot of times you hear the, the negative side of that, you know, the ones who are basically just in it for just the money aspect of it. So I think it's very important that um, we acknowledge the fact that there are there's some respectful organizations within our midst. And uh, identifying with that particular person, entity is Belle Landau, Ann Landau. And uh, she's here with us today, and she's going to talk about her organization and what are the benefits and, and how do you access those organizations and the like. So, so sit back, relax, and maybe invite some of the other members around. And if, you miss, if they missed the show, you may want to you can go on and acknowledge the fact that they can get the show on YouTube, on YouTube, okay? And all you have to do is just put Oregon Voters Digest, and you can get go right to YouTube, and, and there you can look at the show. You can even share it with other folks. You can email. You can, in fact, you can even email the show to other entities and whatever. So, so it's an informational, educational format. So, uh, so thank you for being a part with us. Okay, fine. So why don't we do that? In fact, why don't we acknowledge the vet right off the bat? How is that? We'll acknowledge, we'll acknowledge uh, Craig here just for a moment. Craig, how's it going so far? Remember the last time you were on the show, we had we talked about the, the service dog aspect of it, and it's my understanding that um, you, you got some response, so to speak, maybe a former mayor of Vancouver, a good friend of mine and whatever, and it's my understanding you guys are going to be visiting some of the restaurants and some of the areas that you tried to, uh, tried to basically uh, go in. and. can't some. imagine anybody telling him no. Uh, that's right, that's right. He's he's quite a guy. He's back. What, what am I thinking about? Royce Pollard. Royce Royce Pollard. Royce, Royce former military and also vet aspect of it. He was former mayor of Vancouver, and Royce is still very active in the Vancouver area aspect of it. So it's good to tell tell Royce we said hi. We'll probably get him on the show and and get you guys back with him to talk about what was his experience as he went around with you to those entities that wouldn't allow you to go into the facility. Fair. Fair. Okay. Good. All right, Bruce. How's it going? Great, great. Good, good, good. You're the representative of Veterans of Foreign Wars. What does that mean, and, and what, what sort of services you're providing, and, 
And I, I know you got your candy, and we're going to do that right after you get through talking. <laughs> Talk, tell us about the VFW. Okay, the Veterans of Foreign Wars of the United States of America. It uh, began back in 1899, around the time of the Spanish-American Wars. Mm -hmm. And it's been going ever since. And there's VFW post all over the United States, plus around the world. Uh, and they, uh, we got like 7,400 7, posts at this time. Really? But you can imagine when we started, we had lots of members in relation to the different wars, like World War II. We've been losing membership the last few years because, well, you, you all know that World War II vets are all up in their 90s uh, mm -hmm. so they've been passing on to the better life but uh, it's, it's tough for the younger generation to join organizations for some reason they've got a lot there's so many things going on in our world that uh, they find time to do other things rather mm -hmm. than join an mm -hmm. organization but uh, to be a member of the VFW you have to be a citizen of the U.S. You have to have honorable service in the armed forces of the United States. Neither received a, a honorable or general discharge, which is under honorable conditions, or be currently serving in the in in the services. Uh, service. Uh, one requirement is service in a war, a campaign, or expedition on foreign soil or in hostile waters. This can be proven by any of the following items. Being an authorized campaign medal. Uh, I've got a yeah, pack, co when, copy when, here that... Uh, why don't you identify some of those wars? And well, the, this, the current ones these, too. Are, these are different medals, like you got your campaign medal for Vietnam, and uh, you got... Uh, and then not only the different wars, they're all the way up to the current wars to mm -hmm. Afghanistan mm -hmm. and Iraq, but uh, expeditionary medals are, are uh, issued for just certain things like the Lebanon mm -hmm. event okay. a few years back. Mm -hmm. I have one member that he one day qualified him to be a VFW member mm -hmm. because he got an expeditionary medal for that. So it's possible, you know, you might not have been in the Vietnam War or, or the World War One or World War Two, but there's other items that, and or you can have if you're in current wars, uh, if you receive hostile fire pay or imminent danger pay, you have those records. You can qualify to be in the VFW. Mm -hmm. Or the Korean War now it used to be. They issued, uh, you could be a member if you were in the Korean War from 50 to 53. But then in the last several years, they've approved that if you service in Korea for 30 consecutive days or 60 non-consecutive days, you can be eligible to be in the VFW. Because when you stop and think of the Korean War, I mean, it ended in 53, I mean, basically. Mm -hmm. But we've, we've been there and... You're in you're in danger or wherever you're at over there. I mean, the, yeah. on that DMZ or whatever, yeah. it's a pretty volatile thing. So they've extended that, so you can be uh, eligible due to that Korean uh, either 30 consecutive days or 60 non consecutive days. Mm -hmm. And usually the information that verifies this is your DD 214, which is a very important document, or. You, when you get it, when you get out of service, uh, like your resume, so to speak. Yeah, and, and it 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 usually lists your medals and right. campaigns and whatever you've earned, because it's very important. Because you get some of these people going around that they say, "Well, I'm Army War veteran. I've been mm -hmm. 20 years in the war, and they haven't spent one day in the service." You get that fraud element in there that makes a pretty sick name. Like we see the panhandles a lot of time. Panhandles, people on the street and in the corner saying, Yeah, I'm a vet. I'm a vet, yeah. Uh, you know, of foreign wars and the like, which right. is an issue, right. which hopefully we will, be, we will be addressing. But I've run into a lot of people that don't have, they can't find their DD 214 or whatever. Mm -hmm. Well, I have the phone numbers and stuff that you can, you can get a hold of it pretty easy. Yeah, there's a website now, too, and, isn't yeah, there? An archive yeah. website. Yeah. 
archive way, yeah, right, mm -hmm. it's right here. But uh, yeah. uh, so it, it's it's easy to get a hold of. So if you don't have it, you can get that. That proves your eligibility to be in the VFW. What are the benefits of uh, of veterans uh, as far as the VFW? Why should they acknowledge the VFW? Well, the VFW. Uh, As a member, you get uh, you get a subscription magazine once a month, okay. which, which has a lot of interesting things in, plus a lot of things that can help you in your in your veterans different things. They have special programs like any other organization. Like uh, you get discounts and wide range of businesses that provide things for you. They have all kinds of insurances that you can get. I mean, you have to pay for them, but uh, they're they're a cheaper rate. You can get discounts at, uh, you know, hotels and motels and car rentals and all that kind of stuff. So there's all those things. Plus, the the VFW has service officers, which deal with claims and right. and uh, just most of your service most of your organizations also have uh, service officers downtown at the federal building where you can go in and they'll help you with file your claims and all this kind of stuff and it's amazing the millions of dollars that they've gotten for veterans mm -hmm. and it's sort of a tricky deal right now because I, I know in the VFW our service officer downtown uh, they're not really paid that much and it's hard to keep one but the ones that have been there have been great and they've really helped a lot of veterans in a lot of different areas. I uh, had a uh, friend of mine I go hunting with that uh, he had some heart problems and uh, ended up he was in the hospital and stuff and they went through the pr process, the service officers helped him and he ended up, he's got 100% disability now. And he's getting money for it to help him live. Mm -hmm. uh, the guy was uh, a logger for years, and he had an accident out in the woods, and then he got in this heart problem. You know, you don't have any money to live on. Right, right. So that's why we have so many homeless veterans in, around the country. You know, they, they just don't have the money. And it's pretty sad. And uh, I had a guy come from uh, Utah. He couldn't get a job. Of course, a lot of people can't get jobs. But he ended up, he was in an apartment. He come to our organization wanting money. We helped him. We got some money for to pay off his light bill and stuff. And he joined the, our post and he was around for about six, seven months. But then we helped him out a couple, three different times and ended up he got uh, kicked out of his apartment. And uh, he ended up on the streets, mm. and I've lost contact with him now. Uh, so, just another one that's by the roadside. But uh, anyway, uh, one one way that we try to help uh, veterans in this this type of thing and get money is we have the the Buddy Poppy program that we have. And we're wearing them. Mm -hmm. We're wearing them now, Buddy Poppy. Yeah. And uh, each each year around Memorial Day time. We have these buddy poppies that we distribute. It used to be a real big thing back in the day, and, mm -hmm. and a lot of people come through the, by the stores and they say, well, where have you guys been? We used to do this with, with our grandfather or our grandmother, right. and, uh, but we haven't seen it for years. Well, for about 12, 13 years, I was basically the only one doing it in North Portland, and you can't be at six different stores at one time, so. By yourself. But uh, I'd spend, 10 hour days, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, and I'd go to Fred Meyer, Safeway. I'd alternate between them trying to spread it out a little bit. <laughs> this year I did have like three three other members from my post that uh, went to some of the stores. So we covered more area. And some people think, well, it's hard to sell Buddy Poppies. Mm -hmm. But I tell them, I say, well, it's not, it's not an idea of selling. It's the idea of being there to take the donations. Because our, our people basically support veterans. And they've 
and veterans issues. I mean, they might not necessarily like wars and the things that we're involved in, but the veterans, right. they do support. And uh, we had a good year this year. And a lot of the money, people say, well, that's a lot of money you took in. But when you stop, start thinking about paying electric bills or helping somebody with their rent for a month, <laughs> it don't go far. So, but we, uh, we have these cans and that on it, it says, uh, honor the dead by helping the living. Get that down. All right. Okay, you got it right there. All right. Yeah. And what that means is by wearing this buddy poppy when when you get one, he's ready. You're honoring the veterans that have died. And by putting the donations in the can. Here we go. Yeah. Okay, folks. <laughs> like there that. Go, like that. There we go. By putting those donations in there, know. we collect the money, and that's helping the living. Mm. So you're accomplishing two things. You're showing your honor for the ones that have given their lives or died. And then we're also helping those that are still living that need our help. And that's what the money goes for. And it's, it's a good program because the buddy poppies are made by disabled vets down in White City, <coughs> Oregon. Oh, cool. At the rehab center down yeah. there. They hire? Uh, I, I don't know. Do you want to live in White City? <laughs> you go. Sounds racist to me. <laughs> <laughs> but they, <laughs> but they, uh, they, they, and they get a little bit of spending money. It's it's their therapy for putting them together yeah. mm -hmm. as part of the therapy. Yeah. Plus, they get spending money for it, and then uh, and then we buy from the the post buys. It, it's like one hundred and twenty five dollars a thousand right now. They're talking about raising it because. The vets haven't had a raisin since 2001 yeah, or something. Yeah, exactly. So they might be costing more. But we, we buy them, and then we ha distribute them. And then the donations are all going into a relief fund hmm. that is controlled by the post to help needy vets during the year. And it's a restricted fund, so you can't just spend it for anything. Mm -hmm. So it's a real good program. It's not, that's why I spend a lot of time uh, out there trying to promote it because I, I know it's a good program. I know it's worthwhile and it helps a lot of people. And so uh, that was one of the things that we do. But VFW, the, uh, getting back to it, uh, you say, well, a lot of veterans, sometimes I, I feel like you know, it's not just dealing with veterans. But if you, if you know how organizations, in order to be a nonprofit organization, you have to do things. Mm -hmm. You have to do community service. So our organization, we're involved in community service all the time. And we're trying to help. My main thing is working with youth in our communities. Our post, we sponsor a baseball team. And not just sponsor that baseball team, but teach those young players what a veteran is. Mm -hmm. Because over the years, you know, people sort of got, what is a veteran, you know, and people got bad taste in their mouth after Vietnam and no draft, and no draft and stuff. Yeah. And so, yeah, and, and, and our yeah. schools really have yeah. the history programs really haven't been keeping up with it and and anti recruiters and things of that nature. Yeah, all that Just kind of stuff. Us information because it's employment in many ways too. So uh, it's a it's a matter of teaching these young baseball players you know, what a veteran is. But then the, each year I also take the team in the St. John's Parade, which is a local community parade, and I have them pass out 2,000 2, American flags, you know, teaching them patriotism and, and what about veterans and getting them involved. And they really enjoy it. Of course, they enjoy going to McDonald's afterwards <laughs> and, mm -hmm. and getting treated, but uh, that's part of the program. And then we have essay programs, Voice of Democracy and Patriot's Pen. Mm. We have a Voice of Democracy essay program for high school kids, and it's valued at $30,000 scholarship at the national level if, if they should win the national scholarship. Mm. Mm. But uh, there's, there's several levels that you can win prizes at. And so we do that, and then the middle school, is, it's called Patriot's Pen. 
So these students uh, write uh, patriotic essays, and uh, the Patriots' pen is three to four hundred word essay, and the deadline is November first. So we're we're into that season right now, and uh, then in order to get these essays judged, I carry it one step further. I uh, I've worked with the ROTC program over at University of Portland, the Army and Air Force, and I used to have to get judges for the essays, hmm. and it just got harder and harder to find people that want, wanted to judge essays. Hmm. So I went to these uh, the ROTC, and I get five, six, seven cadets from the ROTC Army program over at University of Portland, and they get together one day and. We, they judge the essays, and they enjoy doing it. I figured, you know, they're academic, they're patriotic, so they'd be perfect judges. That's great. And so it's, it's worked out good. And uh, I do that program and uh, for the youth. Uh, I'm also in, the, in Portland. I'm, I'm a, the commander of a po VFW post in North Portland, Peninsula Pet Post 1325. And uh, there are five posts in Portland which make up District 3 in the state of Oregon. There's uh, 14 districts in the state of Oregon. Mm -hmm. So in our headquarters is over on Hall Street here in Portland. But uh, we have District 3. I'm also the judge for <laughs> the District 3 essay contest too so mm. they keep you busy don't they oh yeah <laughs> I, I try to keep busy that's a lot of hats but yes. I, I enjoy doing it but that's why i got to be mr vfw last year <laughs> yeah. congratulations you got your badge and all that right that's yeah oh, that's a good one that's a good one that was for at the state convention last year but anyway uh we we try to really help the, the community Another thing, a project I'm just working on now, uh, the flags. Mm -hmm. When people fly, a lot of people fly flags, well, then they get wore out. They, you know, they, they deteriorate. And there's one thing I hate to see is a flag flying that's all tattered and mm -hmm. looks looks bad. And so uh, people will ask me, well, what, what do you do with the old flag? So you tell me, you show them. I, I got a. Uh, mailbox from the post office, one of the old collection boxes. I had a body shop repaint the mailbox and they uh, labeled it for me. And the Ace Hardware down in St. John's is going to locate it in front of their store and it's going to say flag drop on it. Mm, interesting. So people can just drop their flags in there and then periodically we'll collect them. Uh, we'll take them in a little ceremony Mm. And uh, dispose of them properly. Nice. We fold, we fold them and do a little Good. salute. And, Good. Good. And uh, dispose of them properly by burning. Uh, so I'm uh, I, I, I got I got a little dedication uh, scheduled for uh, October 13th, which is Columbus Day, mm -hmm. uh, mm. down at the Ace Hardware. Mm. And uh, mm -hmm. I just uh, put an article in. The, and the editor for St. John's Reviews said she's going to have a front page article on it. Mm -hmm. Dealer. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. we'll we'll see. It, uh, we got that scheduled for October 13th. That's that's another thing that we're doing. Uh, those are some of the things that we we try to help. And of course, a lot of you know with people getting older. Uh, got a lot of our members that are in and out of uh, this, uh, assisted living or or in. Uh, therapy you mm -hmm. know they fall and break their hips and <laughs> all kinds of things it's just uh we, we try to visit those people and uh lost a lot of members we try to attend the memorial services and then to uh i'm on the parade committee for the hollywood parade this year mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. we'll be i usually decorate my truck for the st john's parade and the hollywood parade mm -hmm. and uh with a veterans theme so those are some of the things that we do. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's it's not all just helping vets as such, because a lot of it's education. It sounds mm -hmm. like and community. Yeah. And then I have a I have a program also for elementary school kids, where I go to elementary. So I I offer it to the schools, but it's hard to get into schools a lot of times. Mm -hmm. But this year I had one a Cesar Chavez uh, mil, uh, school over in North Portland, 
that I have a little program that I tell them about the Buddy Poppies, and I talk about war. Is war good or bad? And of course, kids, well, it's bad, you know. But then I point out how we got our freedom. You know, it took war to get our freedom. And then I go on into the Buddy Poppies and why we do it and the different wars, and, and I tie it in with Memorial Day. And then I also take a lot of old army equipment, you know, mm -hmm. that yeah, I had when like I was that. in they Vietnam, like you know. They, like they, they, they love that yeah. and yeah, they, they like that. open up for questions. I did four, three fourth grade classes and one fifth grade class, yeah, about 100 students. I got 41 letters from students the next week wow. thanking me for coming. Oh. Yeah. That's, that's what it's all about. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, you know, you know, uh, I want to thank you, Bruce, for sharing this with the public at large because that's the problem. They they tend to forget in terms of what the the sacrifices of many men and women both have made for this country, so they could we could still be America and live in America. And too often, because we don't have the draft anymore, people tend to forget, if you will, and in most cases, that people who are middle class and better are not subjected Absolutely. to to war. It's just the poor, in many ways, just the poor. Mm -hmm. I.e., people just looking for a living, know, nowhere to go. College education. And, you know what I'm saying? And mm -hmm. uh, anything along that line, mm -hmm. see what I'm saying? And so that's why it's so important that we do this, because you, you mentioned Gala for the St. John's Review. You would think the other major newspaper, whether it be Willamette Week or uh, the, uh, the Daily Journal, Tri the Daily Journal of Commerce, the, the Portland Tribune, the, Tribune, the Oregonian, Oregonian and, and all of the, the other media, whether it be KTU, the any, anyone in the media aspect of it, they should be more than glad to I .e., identify with you. I've known you for a number of years, but the bottom line is that they should pro promote, if you will, those activities, like, like you and Bill, and we're going to we're gonna talk to her too also too. But that's why it's so important to get this information out. Very, very important. As you know, the president has been pushing the whole issue of the veteran, the, the VA, and, and how veterans are being taken care of. And now all of a sudden, Everybody's out there trying to identify with the right. veterans, but they don't understand what the, what the other issues are. So that after this so-called gala affair, who's going to take over, if you will, at that point in time? And because I can see a number of the benefits that you can have, because people will, a lot of times, uh, veterans will not speak to anybody else other than a veteran. Being able to go to the post and sit down and shoot the breeze, if you will, and, and uh, folks like, uh, like Craig here, who's having problems with uh, his guard dog and what that meant to it. And a lot of folks just don't know. So that's one of the reasons why we wanted to do this particular piece, and we're going to have you on periodically, you and Bell for that matter, to talk a little bit more about, uh, so, so we can sort of get the understanding of what is going on and why it is, okay. why we're doing what we're doing. So, uh, so I think it's good, and uh, you might want to, you, you got your phone number, is that a phone number that you can you, you identify with? 503-285-5000. Eight four six eight. Okay, one more time on that one. Five zero oh, three two eight five eight four six eight. Okay, good, good. We look like we got a, we got about another minute or so, and then we're going to take a short a short break. But uh, before we get into Bell, because I want to make sure she gets her time, and I want to we really want her to spend the time to educate you about what she does. As opposed to just doing one minute before the break. Aspect. Thank you. Uh, that fair Thank you. Well. That sounds great. Mm -hmm. And so what what I'll do is that uh, I'll just make sure that we shoot uh, shoot the piece, Tom, on on Craig over there with with, Where's uh, Yaz? with his you pup see Yaz? with his pup there. Uh -huh. Talk talk about it a little bit, Craig, about uh, about, about about your pup, your, your your service dog there for a minute. Yes. Come here. Hey. Come I gave you a medal. I gave you a medal, and you all of a sudden you lost my medal. What's up? What's up with that? Yeah. He, he shakes and. Shakes and rattles too much. <laughs> is that what it was? Mm -hmm. This you, is my little buddy. Okay. I met with um, uh, another veteran uh, Friday at Home Depot and um, to do some training. Okay. Um, uh, because I'm training my own service dog. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and uh, I think a lot of vets that come back should be able to train their own service dogs, the ones they had before they took off, and they're still at home, so they yeah. go back and train those dogs. Yeah. There aren't sense. any programs for that that I've that found right? anywhere around here. I found them in North Carolina and Virginia and a bunch of other different states. But nothing important. Nothing, but nothing around here. So Battle I'm buddies. paying out of pocket to, I know about Northwest Battle okay. Buddies. Good. I qualify for that. I got another letter from them, from the uh, mental health just three weeks ago. But they uh -huh. won't help you train your own dog? No. Okay. The, they, they won't. No, the okay. dog has to be under two years old. 
Okay. And as I told you, I didn't want to take a dog from another vet that's coming right. back. Right. So I trained my own dog. And now I'm paying out of pocket to, um, to have him trained, to be able to have him uh, tested by an ADA mm -hmm. uh, rep to see if he qualifies as a service dog. Right. Well, many because I'm going yeah. through all these steps, but as the law doesn't require any of mm -hmm. this. Right. But I'm doing it because I want to help vets coming back. It's hard enough for me to be told no when I'm discriminated against. I'm afraid these kids coming back now when they get told no. With, with their own dogs. With their own dogs. That's, they're going that's to come back important. with an AR-15 and polish up the windows. Yeah, yeah I get it. Yeah. But I tell you, we're going to follow up on that piece. If we get, we get uh, uh, Bruce over here involved. In. Okay, good. We're going to take a short break, folks, and we'll be right back, and we'll hear from Bell. You are watching Oregon Voters Digest. This program can be seen again on these channels on these dates and times. Tell a friend. This is where we start. This is where we start. Okay, I guess I'm here. I guess I'm on again. I was just, in all due respect, that we took a break, but in all due respect, it wasn't a break. And we got to ask him more questions here of, of Bruce and the VFW, whatever. So, folks, it, I mean, it was kind of lengthy. Sometimes you, you might think it might be some stale information, but this is a very important piece. We've got many veterans that are out there that are, that are looking for help, in all due respect, you know. Yep. And in some cases, they might be execs in a in a in a in a corporation or whatever. They too may need help. You know, it just surprised me that the, what P, the definition of PTSD and what it's all about. And um, and we're going to spend more time on that. And probably get some doctors and understanding what that's all about. And what what we can do as individuals uh, to help that situation out. So what we're going to do now is that we're going to go through one of the organizations that, um, like many organizations that are out there, that that are basically reaching out and. Uh, to to the, the whole issue of vets and whatever, and trying trying to do some engagement, and one of the ones that we feel that um, is doing a, a very good job. I've been been in business for about what I think about five, ten years. Ten years. Ten yep. years. Mm -hmm. Didn't know anything about Bell, but I tell you what, I know now about it because she, she's very assertive. She's engaging. <laughs> she she will she will let, make sure that you know what's going I on. I will. And we're going to do this at, at the Oregon Vote Digest, right? Yep. So to set the president for all the rest of the organization. If they don't fit, we're going to throw them out. Okay. Bill. That okay, okay with you? Sounds good. Okay, yeah. Bell. Let, yeah. let, Tell, tell us about the RVP. RVP. That's Returning Veterans Project, right? Okay. What is that all about? When did it so start? So, Returning know Veterans Project started in 2005. A licensed therapist named Carol Levine, watching the news, yeah. watching people come home from Iraq, thinking, I really want to help. What can I do? All I can do is therapy. I wonder if people will need therapy. Mm -hmm. She talked to a few people and they said, yes, that would be a great service to offer. And so, in two days, she gathered 25 local mental health therapists in private practice, and they put this organization together. So what we do is ask licensed, independent mental health providers, chiropractors, acupuncture, massage therapists to open at least one pro bono slot in their practice for an Iraq or Afghanistan war veteran and their family members. And that includes active duty service members, as well as uh, we serve a lot of Oregon Guard and reservists 
because as you know, about 14,000 have deployed mm -hmm. to Iraq and Afghanistan. We have another thousand that were just sent to uh, Afghanistan this summer. Mm -hmm. They'll mm -hmm. be there for 12 months, so. And open to other vets too, Abs other foreign war. Well, no, we were, we're just, just this. Just specifically this for these specific two specific population, mm -hmm. But yeah. if they walk, you could, you would still reference them to We can else. refer them, absolutely. Okay, okay, yeah, good. we get about 25 to 30 information referral calls a month that oh, we yeah. refer okay. people to, good. yeah. Okay, yeah. good, okay, good. So um, we do uh, free continuing education training for our providers. So if you volunteer for us, you get free training on military culture, military sexual trauma, traumatic brain injury, all of the issues that folks are facing when they mm -hmm. come home. Um, last year we had 153 licensed providers who were volunteering and they donated almost 4,000 hours of free treatment mm -hmm. services mm -hmm to 394 vets and 160 family members. And mm. right now we're up to almost 160 providers and we need more. So if any of you watching know or are a licensed insured practitioner in private practice, contact us. You just have to um, call 503-954-2259. That's all you need to do. Mm. Um, and to find a practitioner, if you're in Iraq or an Afghanistan war vet, OEF, OIF, OND, or a family member, you just go to the website, it's returningveterans.org, you click on the Find a Provider page and there's a drop-down menu with the services. Enter your um, county and the type of service you want, and if we have providers available to take a new client, their contact information and name comes up and the vet or family member calls them directly and says, I'm an OIF vet or the spouse of an OIF vet, I want free Returning Veterans Project services. And our providers have to agree to provide free services just as they would to a paying client. Mm. So if it's somebody with complex PTSD who needs to be seen weekly or twice a week for two years, that's what they do. They mm. have that one client that they work with. Mm. If it's somebody who needs just some reintegration help, they need to find what their purpose is again when they mm -hmm. come home, then they might need fewer services, you know, fewer hours of treatment. Mm -hmm. And then they can open up again for a new client. So, um, so that's what we do, and we just started, what I'm really excited about, we just started a new art therapy program, a partnership with the Portland Art Museum, and mm -hmm. we just started two weeks ago, and we have six vets that we're working with. Um, one of the art therapy professors at Merrill Hurst University, Annette Shore, is leading the group, and it's been really successful so far. The art um, Museum, how'd they get in the deal? What, what, what yeah, are they doing? One of they their docents, or? no, one of their docents contacted us. She'd heard about a similar project and in docent, San Francisco. A docent? Docent? a docent are the volunteers that work in museums that lead you around, yeah. tell you about the paintings, right, about right. the artists. So she had been in San Francisco at a museum that was bringing vets to the museum to teach them about art, and she wanted to take it a step further. She went to the VA to try to do it, and mm. they referred her to us. Mm because they don't do community stuff like that. So we got to do the project and we're really excited about it. We hope to make it an ongoing project. Um, so they're making their own art. They go to a different gallery at the art museum. They're gonna get a free membership for one year to the art museum. And then after they visit a gallery, the docents talk about the artist, about the art. Then they go back and they make their own art with the art therapist hmm. each week. So it's really exciting. How about your background, Bill? How did you get involved in this, Pete? I executive have a, director, right? I've been doing nonprofit um, executive director work since 1986. Yeah, in Portland, mostly with organizations that serve women, children, and families. Mm -hmm. And then my son is an Iraq War veteran, and I was an old lady looking for a job five years ago, and somebody said you would be a perfect fit for the Returning Veterans Project, so mm -hmm. I applied. And I'm so happy that they hired mm. me. So I'll have been here five years in November, come November. Um, and it's probably the, my favorite job so far. I really like, like, I'm used to sitting in a room full of women, but now I get to sit in a room full of men most of the time. But I tell you, there are so many women from Oregon who have served in these wars. Um, and I'm working with a group up at the VA right now to try to get together a wall for women veterans mm. um, in Oregon. Yeah, be because there you can't see women anywhere up at the VA. Um, so we want to do they that. Are, they are included in the... 15% uh, of active duty are now women. They say it will be 20% in the mm. next five years. So but the Vietnam Wall uh, at, the, at the zoo, they include women. Yeah, in yeah. but at the, I'm talking about at the VA. 
Or the VA. Yeah. You said they're not so there. So the wall, we want to make a wall of women veterans at the VA. Is, there, yeah. is that the only, do they have a men wall? wall? They do. They have men they have everywhere one? at the VA. No, no, do they have a wall? I, I think so. Yeah. You think so? Yeah. All right now. <laughs> I'm yeah. sure. Don't we'll you we'll think? We'll make one person. There's well, women every, I mean, men <laughs> everywhere at the VA. That's all you see, right? Well, I'm engaged. Women in feel a little uncomfortable going up there. So yeah. they're well, having a hard time getting women to come to the women's clinic because they don't feel like they're well represented. Really? Yeah. Oh, we're going to talk about that, right, Yeah, because there is a women's health clinic up there now since Well, it's a big problem in military sexual assaults. In 2012, 26,000 sexual assaults. And how 17 many of them of the women were gang raped by their own uh, forces. Yep, mm. yep. And that, that to me is... So we have done five military sexual trauma trainings throughout the state since mm. I started. Because this issue, for if you serve a woman vet, you can damn well bet that she has been either mm -hmm. harassed mm -hmm. or sexually assaulted mm -hmm. by another service member. 40% of the sexual assaults are committed by somebody in command. And that's who you report the sexual assault to. Mm -hmm. So it's a huge issue, and for men as well. One of 100 men in the military. Mm -hmm. So um, it's a huge issue, and we really do want people, thank you, Craig, we want people to be aware of it. Um, well, I recently went through anger management, and I was talking to Bruce about it, and a couple things they didn't even mention was suicide and sexual assaults. Mm -hmm. I think that was could be part of the discussion next time you, I go. You think so? And Bruce is going to go with me. Oh, yeah. Good. Check it out. We're going to raise a little heck. Good. Yes. Oregon's National Guard, since 2011, has either been first, second, or third in terms of the highest suicides of all guards in the nation. It's a huge mm -hmm. issue They're the least state. trained. They're the guys that sign up for two weeks a, a year and one month or one weekend a month. And they, they don't have all the same no, training as the right. uh, rest of the soldiers. That's right. And I don't think their deaths count in the number of deaths, uh, military deaths. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I think if you're over there, they do. I don't know when you come home, you know. I don't know. Right now, uh, we j have been doing some yellow ribbon events for the families. Mm -hmm. The Guard is, for the first time, just doing them for families of the folks recently deployed. And um, I met some wives whose husbands, it was their fifth deployment yeah, to Iraq right. or Afghanistan. Yeah, that's another thing with multiple deployments. Multiple deployments, um, yeah. Involuntary and extensions on mm -hmm. your contracts. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, you know, Lots in all, of issues. you know, in all due respect, what happens a lot of times is that we, because we don't have the draft, yes. the poor are the only ones that go. And a lot of times they, they, they don't, they, they, don't they, they can't recruit anyone else because yeah. of the standards in many ways. And so as a result of the fact that the people who are already in, they are having to go back and forth. It's an issue that hasn't been addressed. Less than 1% of right. this population That's has right. served in Iraq. Exactly. And so, yeah. so yeah. in all due respect, we're right in the midst of elections. So that may be some of the questions that it's you may want to ask those people who are running for office, especially who are running for the Senate, who are running for Congress, and who also is running for the President of these United States. I mean, they need to bring this issue to the table. Glad you mentioned and, Elizabeth Warren. Okay, well, but you know, in all due respect, yeah. The, the, Go, uh, Elizabeth. Well, no, but we need, to, <laughs> we, we need to bring this able to the table. As I think about Bruce and, and some yeah. of the points that he yeah. makes about the yeah. fact that people don't, uh, don't even acknowledge the fact that uh, people of foreign wars exist, or even like people like yourself. And because, in all due respect, we're from the down at the bottom, bottom of the end. But, I, but, but believe me, if there was a draft, in many cases, we wouldn't even have a war. Yeah, or even just you have to do some sort of service, whether well, it's Peace Corps or military but, but you say or war whatever. Right up the front, at the front end of it. I mean, people tend to get a little bit more serious, and I think they, they sit do. down and negotiate they a little do. bit more at the UN for that matter. For that matter. Yeah. The other so, thing we know about the population of the military now is that the military, I think, for the first time ever, has a higher people in the military have a higher rate of child abuse. Yes. And so you add childhood trauma that's been untreated onto war zone trauma and you know you well, have people that's that PTSD, really and that's why we're going to have a you have people have really that's going to really yeah. sit down and talk about the whole issue of PTSD good, good, which is good. very very important good. and uh, I think that's a very important thing in all due respect people go it goes back they take the Korean vets the whole nine yard you'd be surprised at the, of the, the things that have come to the table and people are responding in, at the VA from the yeah. standpoint of trying to compensate for these yeah. folks and their, their yeah. issues that they've had if they're unemployed if they're unemployed homeless. and they win the career, the homeless mm -hmm. or this, that, and the other, yeah. they can actually go through the program, yeah. and then, and i.e., the government will pay them in back pay, for that matter, the unemployment piece, and you provide them with other services, for that matter. So there's a lot of things there, and especially when you, when you start thinking about the folks who are actually manning those posts at the VA, 
are from VFW. You right. got me? And so I think it's very important that we know that, that piece. Yeah. Other, other Un areas, unfortunately, you know? the do you guys know about JTAP, the reintegration team that Oregon has had uh, during these wars? Keep talking. It was just cut. JTAP. Joint Transition Assistance Program. There were 16 uh, people. They were all vets working around the state. Mm -hmm. Helping veterans get employment. If somebody called and they needed a transportation, if somebody was suicidal, a family member called, they would go right to the vet. In 2012, JTAP made 401 referrals just to our organization for mental health services. You know these people? Yeah. Why don't and you give them a call? Bring them on here. We'll bring them on. We'll absolutely. They just got their positions cut. So now there's 16 vets cut who are doing state? good work. Is yeah. a state? Yeah. Well, you know, in all due respect, many of the folks who are, who are in the legislature today have never served. That's the other reason why I'm saying that if, if in fact, if we had a draft system, people, if people were familiar with that situation, guess what? They understand the seriousness. But in all due respect, it's just the opposite. Too many people don't it's think just, about it. They just don't think yeah. about it. You know, hey, I'm safe here, and yeah. I could kill this. What happened? You know, just like me, this Obala, o Obola situation with this, this whole Ebola, issue, yeah. Ebola aspect mm -hmm. of it. Now, mm -hmm. they're going to be sending 4,000 troops down there. You got me? And most people say, well, I don't want to go down there. So guess what? You send the military down there. Yeah. You can't say no. Yeah, right? <laughs> yeah. You, know, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, so we got a lot to talk about. And, and this yeah. JTAPs, I, I want to really talk to these folks because if, in fact, they're doing a, an excellent job, now is the time really to bring were. this to the issue, to talk the to table. The general. Because the in all general. The, well, yeah. Yeah, right. Well, I want to bring them on. In fact, he was very supportive of that. Get him on the, the, this next week because we got an election going on right now. People have to get elected, and they want the votes. And as far as I'm concerned, we'll talk about them right on the show. Are these people okay. located in Salem? You know, I don't know how the money work. I think the money came from the feds, and Senator Wyden and Merkley were very instrumental in getting it funded the last couple of years because it was supposed to be cut two years ago. So what happened? Why, why didn't they refund it? But something about the bid this time. The bid? Well, that, we'll find out, right? You, you yeah. contact these folks. I, I will get, try to find out. Yeah. Give me the phone number okay. or whatever, okay. and we'll make sure we contact. Right, Craig? Right. Okay, good, good. Okay, we got to, we got we still have a few minutes. Why don't we just have sort of a round the table discussion aspect of it in terms of uh, some of the experience uh, that you've had with some of the folks that you you worked with yeah. in the past, and yeah. and where are they today, and yeah. and and are they responding back by contribute? You said you contribute their time. You you have a lot of vets that you service, if you will, men and women that have come back to the table and say, what can I do to help? We have had that happen, and you know, unfortunately, we don't have a lot unless we refer them to people like you. Mm -hmm. So we let people know that you're here, that there are other organizations that they can work with, or mm -hmm. they can help us raise funds for mm -hmm. our organization to keep doing the services. But yeah, we actually had a young Marine come in last fall. Um, usually it's totally confidential. I have no idea who the providers are serving because mm -hmm. they go directly through the website to them. Oh, so that that's right? how we keep it confidential. Ah, okay. So I only know that they did X number of hours for a male veteran or a female veteran last year um and so this young marine vet came into the office and said i just want to say thank you mm -hmm. he uh he came home he was trying to go to college he was having a really hard time staying in college and then his best friend from mil the military committed suicide mm -hmm. and he kind of mm -hmm. fell apart mm -hmm. and his grandparents happened to be donors and they handed him our brochure mm -hmm. and said you need to go see mm -hmm. one of these people mm -hmm. and so he he did he was seeing a therapist and an acupuncturist and a chiropractor, and he finished school, and he just won an international photography award. Interesting. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah, he was going to Maryland. So he had the support, the yep. support service. In fact, yep. Craig, I'm going to bring you on board yeah. on that end of it, because in all due respect, Craig's, uh, uh, Craig's had PTSD. In fact, you know, he's, he still has. I've got some of it, too, from the Vietnam War sure. aspect of it. Yeah. And then how does employers, i.e., relate to you? Along that line. Do you have to? Sh do you share with them that the fact you had PTSD and what it's all about? Then the employee, or, or I you haven't had a nothing? decent job since 2008, Bruce. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it's not an issue. Do do the employers talk to you about it? Do you talk to them about it? My last uh, employer was a vet. He was a vet, and you shared with him about the PTSD. Um, not really. Okay, because a lot of times because you, know, you, you you don't want your employer to know. It's it's um. It's like but telling an employer you have cancer or something, right? But it's like why when not? I walk in a bar with my dog who mm -hmm. says PTSD on my my jacket or in his jacket, mm -hmm. and you're already admitting I have a problem. May I please come in here and give you money? Hmm. And they still say no. Hmm. Wow. It's, wow. it's an, it's an mm -hmm. issue that needs to I'm be discussed. Sorry. 
Yeah. Now, it's an issue that needs to be discussed because, in all due respect, I'd say 80, 80, 90, 95 percent of those individuals are returning vets across the board. Well, well, they, don't, you know, they don't even want to go to the VA. Right. They don't want to get diagnosed right. with right. PTSD. Right. They're reaching out for every other thing they right. can. Right. Weed, booze, uh, Absolutely. all kinds of dangerous uh, behaviors, mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. and yeah. on and on and on and on. Yeah. I see these guys all the time, yeah. as you know, Bruce. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Not all of them make it down so, to where they so need to go. So how should we? Let's, let's, let's educate these, uh, these folks who are running for office. How, what, how, should they, how should we deal with this whole issue of PTSD in terms of informing employees? Because people want to get back in the... In, in, in the it's a natural response well. to an unnatural condition. Mm -hmm. Anybody who goes to war is going to have a reaction to it, right? Because mm -hmm. you're asked to make choices that you grew up to believe were not okay. Mm -hmm. Whether it's shooting somebody or protecting somebody with a weapon, whatever it is. Nowadays, it's do I shoot the kid over there with a the cell phone in mm -hmm. Afghanistan mm -hmm. or Iraq? Or do I let my buddies go and get up to that kid and then an IED goes off? Mm -hmm. So either choice is a very, very difficult one mm -hmm. and can cause a traumatic response. Mm -hmm. it's, it's not really a disorder. It's just a natural human response mm -hmm. to a traumatic situation. Well, you know, a lot of people don't realize also, too, we think about the military aspect of it. But just in, just in regular Everyday jobs, life. like, like yep. the police department for that matter. Absolutely. Many policemen, i.e., get disability on PTSD. Yep. Firemen, <laughs> but, but they first never, responders. But, but no yep. one says anything about that piece. Right. You know, they can right. work anytime, as long as, they, in fact, they can even come back on the job <laughs> and work as right. police officers, as firemen and this, that, and the other. But yet, still, when it yeah. comes down to the military personnel, like, like Craig or whatever, it's a whole different ballgame. You got me? So a lot of times people don't want to, so we need to talk about it. Yeah. Need to talk about the whole issue of PTSD. So hopefully maybe we get one of your therapists. Absolutely. Or somebody Absolutely. We might know that we might be just Absolutely. share with, to educate yeah. the public because Absolutely. they need to know. But a lot of times people say, well, gee whiz, I, we got some crazy, you know, running around here and that might blow me away or something, you know, something to that effect. Do you guys know about the project at PSU, the research project no. with employers? What is that? It's called SERVE and it's a, I think it's a three or four year research project helping employers understand PTSD and working with employers, so you, they'd you, be you, great to have you on those too. Folks? Yeah, One please. of my board members works with them. Yeah. Please, let's get them on, Absolutely. okay? Let's get them on. It's very okay. important, people, that, okay. that we know about, it, especially now during the election time. People want to get elected to office, and uh, typically what happens is that uh, they tell you what you want to hear, yeah. and then once they get in there, you don't hear them anymore, see them anymore. But some of them are good guys, don't get me wrong, and men and women, Absolutely. both. Absolutely. They're both. Absolutely. But we want to make sure this time you ask them Their the question. Their system's kind of broken too, right? Well, yeah. I mean, in fact, do we need <laughs> yeah. them? I, I, I don't want to get caught up into that part. Right. Of that. I'll put that I on crazy. Thought Congress's uh, approval rating was now 8%. Oh, yeah. it's a high, yeah. 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 Well, in all due respect, I, just a little, just a little quick note on that piece. I think one of the ways we can solve that problem is that when they file to run for office, they have to identify specifically what their platform is going to be. <laughs> so therefore, when they go down to Congress, that's what they work on. But what happens a lot of times, you, you, you get the person who gets elected, now they look good, they, they can talk, and this, that, and the other. Then they get in there, and then and in there for forever. It should not be a lifetime job. Right. It should be term limit aspect of it. So meaning that if you if you're not successful getting your issues across, guess what? Stand, give the other person another shot. If you are successful, you can run again, but it's still a term limit kind of a deal. Yeah. We got too many professional politicians today. I mean, you can get a degree for politicians today. Oh yeah, <laughs> you can get a degree in terms of what to say and how to how many babies to kiss, you know, just to get there. Fair. I hate to put or it who to get the money from? Oh, who to get, get the money from? Yeah. That's right. Because anybody can say anything. They can say and they, they do. They can write down anything. And they do. And so they what do. do you believe? You that's know? right. That's right. And the media, and the media, in many ways, they could care less about it because during the election time, they're getting money's on ads. So you can say anything you want to say, and just like one of the media persons told me, with well, Bruce, tell you what, here's the deal: if a person is lying, they'll say, so what? They'll tell the other politicians, well, the person is lying. Well, okay, fine. How many money? You got some dollars? You want to pay for another ad to, to say that, that person is ad? We'll do that. We'll run that one too, whether you're lying or not. Don't matter. We don't vet nothing. So if I don't know, we got a problem. Craig, Craig shared that with me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a different one. Well, look, we got about seven more minutes. Any, let's, let's go around the room again and, and make those lasting, i.e., how to get in touch with you. Bruce, how to get in touch with your, organiza your organization. You got a phone number? Okay. Uh, phone number is 503-285-8468. Email is vfwbruce at gmail.com. Okay. And vet for Veterans Day, November 11th, uh, on a Tuesday, any veteran can participate by con contacting you. Can can, yeah, that, can people right. can people march in the parade? 
if they want to? They can. I'm, I'm going to have my truck. Uh, I got a neighbor that has a deuce and a half. He's going to drive that deuce and a <laughs> okay. half with my truck, too. Cool. I was in that deuce and a half once. That, that, was no, that you were last? in the other one. Was that in the other one? You okay. were in Richardson's. <laughs> it was a Richardson deal. Oh, okay. Well, you know. But uh, <laughs> he was a vet. You know. And I'm going to have 10 people passing out these buddy puppies right? prior okay. to the parade. Good, good. And one of my vets in my post is disabled. And he rides a electric scooter. Yeah. He's going to ride that electric scooter and sort of be the supervisor of the oh, people good, collecting good. the... Great. And they wear their old uniforms or their ribbons. You can and, and, if, it you if, if it fits. <laughs> <laughs> I heard that. No, there you go. No, no M16 strapped on your, on your deal, Greg. <laughs> Bill, what about yourself? Veterans Day, we're going to be doing our annual chow down event. So we have several restaurants that join us and give a percentage of their food on or of their take on Veterans Day. Um, 808 on North, on East Burnside is one of them. And uh, um, the Lardo restaurants joined us last year. I hope they do again this year. So look at our website, returningveterans.org, to find out information on that. Mm -hmm. And we again, we always need providers. We have a really cool wall of honor up on our website. You can make a $25 donation, put up a photo of your veteran, and say a few words about them and what branch they served in. And we have about seven pages of vets that are up there um, mm -hmm. who've been honored by their family members or their co-workers so that's a great thing to do to uh, honor somebody on Veterans Day. Yeah. So you encourage uh, you take the restaurants to, to maybe to do get something involved. for funding. Absolutely. The, like maybe the, maybe something in the morning like SOS. A lot of these veterans would love to go out there and read a little newspaper <laughs> and go tell the SOS. That's what we wanted. Are you, did I go in the wrong, did, did I say something <laughs> wrong, yeah, Greg? I mean, do I mean did you, you do SOS? Uh, no. uh, you sure? I'm sure. Well, you, you did it at my place. I mean, what's, what's the problem? No, I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> it's taken eggs, maybe. <laughs> but anyway, it, it's, it's, it's kind of like chow down and then you know, the, the old guys, you know, like us and and been around, you know, stuff on a shingle, you know, basically just uh, gr <laughs> ground, meat, ground meat and flour, you know what I mean? Just want to make it right. And full of saltpeter. Yeah, yeah, there you go. Yeah. But I might, what, I, what <laughs> I might say is yeah, I have trouble getting the younger people to join my organization. Right. But, you know, because we don't, we don't have a building that we own. Right. And they're looking for a cheap drink or something. Well, we don't have that. Yeah, yeah. But the key to the VFW I mean, everything is political. Right. And so we have our national office and stuff there after Congress all the time and getting these benefits approved. So just like this fiasco in Arizona with the VA hospitals and stuff. I mean, we were right there. Yes. And our national commander, he, mm -hmm. he was talking yeah. to the president himself, too, you know, and uh, yeah. just like this soldier that was in Mexico because he had a, took a gun in there and they put him in prison. And mm -hmm. Our commander <laughs> sent a note, note to the president said, get him out of there. Mm. You know, you can do it. Talk to the president. You don't, you know, you don't piddle diddle around here. You, you know, you go to it. And he didn't do it. So a week later, he got another letter. So you didn't do what I said. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, there. Did they but get it, him but out, the more, by the way? No, they're still working on it. They're still working on it. The, they, the, they're looking at doing it now, though. But the right. larger numbers yeah, you have yeah. as membership, the more power you have, right. you can say, well, I got a million rather than right. 200,000 right. people. Right. Well, I'll tell you one thing. You, you, are, you are now in politics in Oregon, right? <laughs> I'm joining as a lifetime member of the VFW. Okay. You know that, right? Okay. Okay, good. And then Craig's going to definitely be right there with us. We're going we're gonna to bring the issue to Oregon. Okay. about the issues that are affecting it to bill we're going to give you some service cool. is that fair thank you okay good well folks thank you very much i hope you got something out of this particular show tell your friends and whatever like i said email the show to folks especially the vets uh, members would be family members and, and, and the like and whatever and maybe the employees and the like to, to say we need that support in all due respect we need to know